to do We've that. actually built a special room now for the days when the restaurant's closed mm. because we use the restaurant as a flexible space. It's, it's closed yeah, more than I'd like. Yeah. But we've created this lunch room, which is for staff to eat their own food, so it gives them a hub on the days when the restaurant's open. But on the days when the restaurant's closed, the caterers then provide something different. So we've tried to say, well, yeah, let's make it a pie and mash day or an Indian takeaway day or something so there's a theme that attracts people to go there because if it's sandwiches they'll go out to the market mm. but you know just something different to attract them in there which works quite well but actually one of the things that interests me we've talked about in different ways is i think the real estate space i start with in my head what business we're in and i still feel really really strongly that you know if you look at this you look at this cost of the space I and mean, you can talk about catering subsidy actually if you get the space wrong and you've got mm. double the space or 50% of the space and you're not getting a great yield off the space, the hidden subsidy mm -hmm. is probably much less of whatever you support the catering by. So I think it, it, what, one of the things is always a plea as a caterer is look at it in the round, not just on the day of the, a tender and you've got, you know, sort of five bids in. And it's, 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 it's kind of, is the whole thing right? And actually over time with some good... FM strategy, it can make a huge difference to the culture, the social feel, the well-being of the staff, the best use of space, and keeping operating costs sensible. But I also agree, because we cater for many small businesses, it would be impossible for many of them to go to a commercial model because there's just not enough revenue from the big, and, and let, because you've got a ceiling of the high street of what you can charge. Uh, the customer, it's just a ceiling there. And those are actually our key competitors, mm -hmm. it's not you know, another catering company, it's who's in the ice cream. Mm -hmm. Well in many cases the subsidy is, is significantly lower than the alternative of compensating people through the wage packet. You know, by actually having that there, mm -hmm. and I'll take your point as well Alistair, that the, you know, the, it's these other imponderable costs like productivity better performance, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, which hit the bottom line of any organisation. You can't, it's very difficult you to measure those. Yeah. You know, we think, if you think about it, you talk about FN strategy, of course you're thinking about the whole big picture, but you can't think about everything. It's only over time you suddenly realise that's the right decision. Mm -hmm. yeah, the one thing I wanted to talk about was concessions um, within workplaces. I'm quite sure, I've been to a number of buildings where they have the, the Starbucks or the Amigos or the Costa or whatever it is, either in the reception area or in breakout areas. And I'd be interested to know from people's experiences why why would you do something like that? What benefits does it bring? Sort of cost issues. Who, who has a concession? I, um, I'll, I'll start off on that one. I, I, I have to say, concession was always something I was never particularly a big fan of. Um, but on that basis, we did actually introduce into our organisation of Starbucks um, in the middle of last summer, and I was astonished to see how much the sales increased. Um, in terms of prices, the prices are kept very similar to, in fact, yeah, very similar to the um, the in-house brand that we had previously. Um, so no real increase in price for the customers on site. Um, but yes, I would say sales probably increased by about forty percent. Very surprised. Because of the brand. Yes. Because of the brand. Mm -hmm. yeah. What sort of people's experiences? We, because people want the brand. Um, we have Benugas, we have Starbucks, it's the familiarity, it's what they come in and ask for. I think it's interesting, if you, you know, Wendy's point, you know, if you've got a building like this, you can make some choice. And I think mm -hmm. actually it makes good sense to have choice, because then you're picking up the, the people who do want a branded offer. Uh, I, it's interesting as well, my experience has generally been that, I mean, we're happy to use any brand, Starbucks, Costa, you know, Illy, that's uh, the, the, or our own in-house brand. We tend to find the sales don't vary too widely, as long, I think, their idea to do a bit of a taste session, mm -hmm. get people's opinion. It's that sense of engaging with yes. the consumer. Mm -hmm. And once the consumer's engaged, you think, well, I've got, I've been given what I want, and then they support it. So I think that's the, probably the valuable thing in it. Yeah, I think that, I know, at um, Max3, you spend a lot of time training your baristas, because I don't, Obviously, there'll be people that choose Starbucks because they're used to it because it's an American organization or, or, or a European organization might choose Costa. But if the barista can't make coffee and can't smile and engage with you and say, oh, Bella, how are you, love? You know, my, my sister would walk past a Starbucks to go to Cafe because the bloke fancy, so it's simple as that, you know. It's interesting because we're all 
all here pretty much talking from the, the corporate um, side of things. But I visited a hospital recently, which um, is the first hospital in the UK to put in a Starbucks in its, in its vicinity. And the reason they did it was so that um, patients can come down and go to the Starbucks when they've got guests and they feel they've left the hospital. Because mm -hmm. um, it's in a bit of quite, it feels exactly like the Starbucks. You, you would think you're on the high street, you wouldn't realize you were still in the hospital. And they um, did some research and they felt that it would aid healing recovery times so people have felt that they spent some time outside the hospital. They also had a, an MS cafe as well with the same same kind of experience mm -hmm. for that very reason. So it's just looking at a slightly different angle. We look at it to sort of keep people um, happy in their in their um, business and keep them within the thing. This is an idea that you can create a um, Starbucks so people can escape um, but still be I'm very passionate with it, the um, environment that your restaurant is. I know we need to use it as as, as space that's very well utilized but there's nothing to do with work in it. So it's a non work environment inside work that makes Do people sense. bring laptops and stuff in? Yeah, we, obviously, we, the wireless environment helps that. By having very few PowerPoints, it means they don't sit there all day doing it. So, you know, you want them to, to be able to work there, but not all day, because you actually want people to sit and have a meal as well. So, I think um, that, that does help. Uh, but if there's no work posters up, or, or, or at least if they are, they're very um, sparse or toned down, mm. it, it feels like you're somewhere else. Yeah. And I think someone mentioned earlier about, we are lucky in some of them, we have great great vistas, great mm. views that make you know, better than most restaurants. Mm. So just by going up into a space, it feels open. Yeah. I think it's incredibly important to make the space feel different yeah, yeah, from the work floor. Which is, because I don't think um, a lot of senior managers feel that. I think mm. they think, now that's real estate that's useful work. It should be, have a work feel to it. Mm.